Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we want to talk about whether or not we can splice Cat5 cable or Ethernet cable uh, without using any fancy connectors. Just twist the wires together. Now, this is out of necessity today because I don't have the right stuff to do it properly, so sometimes you just have to make things happen. I will link to the proper materials down in the des description for how to splice an Ethernet cable properly. Uh, but in this case, like I said, we're going to just try twisting those wires together. If this video helps you out, please do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos like this one. Hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. You see in the country here where we live, uh, we don't have any in-ground options for internet. So it comes wirelessly to the edge of the grove over here where there's a little dish. And then it comes via this cable uh, to the house. And this cable's not buried yet because uh, the ground was frozen when it was installed and I haven't gotten it buried yet. Hopefully we're gonna do that this summer. Consequently, the cable was exposed, leaving it vulnerable to being chewed upon by little critters and such. So we have a damaged cable here and we're gonna repair this with basic supplies. And obviously I've disconnected power to this already. So we're just gonna trim this back a little bit past where the damage began. And same thing on the other side. If you're looking for a great utility knife, this here is the one I'd recommend. Link in the description. Also helps support the channel just a little bit if you choose to buy one at no extra cost to you at all. So what I'm gonna do is just score this lightly around the outside edge and hopefully be able to just cut through the sheathing by itself and you should be able to just kind of tip it and twist it and break it off then like so so there we've got that off and carefully cut that off now we have our four twisted pairs and we will separate those and then one by one we're gonna strip a half inch maybe even a little bit more, maybe three quarters of an inch off of each one of these so we have the bare conductor exposed. And there we have one set completed. So we'll do the same thing with the other side of the cable. Got both sides trimmed back and stripped back. Now I'm just gonna line up these ends so that they're about the same length right here. And I'm gonna tape these cables together like this. But I just wanna twist these together just like you would do any other electrical splice to see what the effects might be. So here's our blue from one side and our blue from the other side. Just bring those together and we're going to just really simply twist them together. Just like that. So we'll do that with all the colors, and we'll see where we end up. <laughs> so there they are, all twisted together. Looks pretty nice, huh? Now the most important part of this process is going to be sealing these uh, connections up. So we're going to start with liquid tape here, and I've got all of my wires fanned out nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this stuff. I'll link to this liquid tape in the description if you need some. But, you know, electrical tape and silicone might work as well. Just uh, anything to kind of cover these connections up is valuable. So we'll just go ahead and brush this stuff on to each and every one of our connections. We can always apply another coat if we need to. All right, so with that, I think this is good enough that we can go test it inside now and see if this is gonna work or not. Otherwise, there's no use uh, spending too much time making this all weatherproof here. So we'll go ahead and reattach our cable. And we'll go see if it's working. Come here, yes, come here. I always make the enemy do this kind of stuff. Okay. So I have the website typed in, speedtest.net, and then you have to tap enter. No surprise to me. I don't know why you're so shocked every well, time. Well, I don't know. It's just, you never know what it's going to do. Okay. Oh, you have to, can you press that button, Havala, right in the middle? Yeah. Touch it. Tap. 
tap. Oh, there you go. Yep, it's working. Woohoo! 20 megabits. <gasps> that means you get to have your music. 23 yeah. megabits down. Yeah. Is that where you turn on the music, Havila? Yeah. So we can go back outside now and continue our splice. So we've got our liquid tape on there now and it's somewhat dry. And now we're going to tape around each wire individually and then wrap them all up together. Actually works a little bit nicer just to put one piece of tape over it like this and then fold it in half over the wire like so. That kind of just encapsulates it a little bit better I feel like. So they're all, they're all uh, separately taped now. We'll just put them all together. So they're all taped together now. As an extra precaution, I thought it might be a good idea to take a piece of PEX tubing, a scrap that I have laying around, and just slide that over the top of it, like so. And then I'm gonna fill the ends with silicone. And then we'll fill the top of this with silicone as well. It should pretty much totally weather seal it. So <laughs> there you have it. Yes, indeed, you can splice an ethernet cable with by just twisting the cable together. In a pinch, you can make it happen. Uh, in this application, I, this is only supplying the internet to my place and it doesn't need to be that fast because my internet speeds are pretty slow. Uh, so it's kind of a fine repair. Now, I don't know exactly how much it would reduce your bandwidth. If you had a higher bandwidth application where you're pushing, you know, 400 megabits per second or something, I don't know if that would affect it very much or not. Uh, so, in my application, it's fine. You know, temporary situation, it's good. But otherwise, you definitely want to use those links in the description, purchase the correct materials to fix it, or just run a new cable altogether. So thanks a ton for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Also, check what I check out what I just figured out. This is a microphone that I use. It's a El Cheapo one that I got on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. But I have this thing plugged into the USB port on my phone, which I didn't even know was possible. I'm just using a USB-C to USB-A adapter, and apparently it works. So that's cool. Maybe I'll be able to create some better audio in future videos. All right, talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Yay.